Hey guys, I'm so glad you're back for another episode of Vetfolio Voice. On this episode, sponsored by Zoetis, I'm joined by Dr. Dana Liska to discuss a new abbreviated approach to the dermatology workup, as well as managing patient comfort with Apoquel and Cytopoint. Veterinary practices are busy most of the time these days, which can make it hard to pursue a full dermatology workup on many of our patients. Rather than cut corners, check out Dr. Liska's abbreviated approach to the dermatology workup to help us better manage more of our patients. And of course, many of us use Apoquel and Cytopoint to help manage our patients' comfort level in these cases, so don't worry, we'll discuss their roles in these workups as well. Dr. Dana Liska received her Doctor of Veterinary Medicine degree from Kansas State University in 1999. Following graduation, she completed a rotating internship in medicine, surgery, and critical care at Mission MedVet in Mission, Kansas. Dr. Liska then practiced general small animal veterinary medicine for four years in Helena, Montana. In 2004, she began a dermatology residency at the University of Florida College of Veterinary Medicine, Go Gators. After completing her residency and achieving diplomate status in the American College of Veterinary Dermatology in 2006, she remained at the University of Florida College of Veterinary Medicine as a clinical instructor of dermatology. She then moved to the Dallas area to join the Animal Dermatology Referral Clinic. For nine years, she practiced clinical dermatology at ADRC, and for five of those years, she shared partnership with two other dermatologists. In September 2016, she left private practice to join Zoetis. Currently, she serves as Chair of Social and Sponsorship Committee for the North American Veterinary Dermatology Forum. She's certified as a Level 3 Fear-Free Speaker, Human-Animal Bond Speaker, Feline-Friendly Speaker, all of which demonstrates she's highly motivated by the idea of protecting the bond between you, your clients, and their pets. Let's go ahead and get into our talk. Well, Dr. Liska, thank you so much for joining me today. We're so happy to have you on the podcast. Thank you. I have to say I'm super excited to join you. I feel like I have a bunch of great information to share. And in fact, I would say to your listeners out there, I think that you're going to really like a lot of the of the info that I have to share. And hopefully you'll want to write it down. So since it's a podcast... I'm going to ask listeners for some active participation. I would just love it if everyone who's listening could look around, just grab a pen or a pencil and a sheet of paper, even a good size scrap of paper will do, and just sit back and wait for more instructions down the line. I love that. And, you know, even though I host these podcasts, it is not uncommon for me to go back and turn them on again afterwards because we do get such great information from our speakers. So be preemptive, guys. Go ahead, get your scrap piece of paper now so you don't have to go back and listen again. <laughs> All right. So we're talking about dermatology workups. And in this busy world of practice, it can be difficult to find time to do our basic dermatology diagnostic workup when we're faced with dogs with allergic paritis. So Dr. Liska, why is the diagnostic workup so important? And how can these busy practices fit them into fit a good diagnostic workup into our appointment times? And as a matter of fact, I've heard there might be kind of a new approach that will help fit good workups into, you know, this sort of madness of practice. Yeah, right. It is the golden question of dermatology, and that is how to make it simpler. And I know, I know that your listeners are really being pushed to their limits these days. Uh, practices busy, navigating staff shortages, dealing with demanding clients. We, we know that that's, that's a lot of what's going on today. And our team at Zoetis has been talking about what we call the five-step approach to dermatology for a few years now. And recently, we took a closer look and we streamlined that approach, focusing on the first three steps for, say, the first-time derm cases or for those dogs that are coming in with just seasonal disease that are really only visiting the practice one or two times a year. So by focusing on the first three steps, we feel like, yeah, that we kind of have a newer approach. And I'm going to share, I mean, it's, it's nothing, or should I say, there's nothing scientific about our abbreviated approach. And I can't even really say that every veterinary dermatologist out there has adopted our new approach, but at Zoetis, we, we truly feel this is a realistic way to structure your derm appointments. 
It's a protocol that makes a lot of sense and it's going to help make Derm feel so much more manageable for primary care practitioners and simplify a confusing medical problem for clients. We realize that in the real world, most of you are already using the three-step track and it may be all you need to appropriately manage many of your patients with allergic dermatitis. I definitely don't want to suggest that the full workup isn't important in the perfect world. Every dog should have a definitive diagnosis as to the underlying cause of the allergic dermatitis, because it will help you find that most appropriate solution for the long-term control. But does every dog need a food trial? Most certainly not. Well, I would say that is good news overall. (laughs) So let's talk about this kind of updated approach. What's the first step in our updated approach? Let's say for our first time dog with a flare of allergic pruritus. Yeah. So here's where I want everyone to get that piece of paper and actively participate. So take your scrap of paper and turn it long ways. And along the top from left to right, just draw five circles. And let's start with that first bubble on the left and just put a number one in the, in that first circle that you've drawn. So we're going to call this the first step and it is stop the paritis. And for those of you who are listening, I'll use that word pruritus to mean the sensation of itch. So when seeing that pritic allergic dog, our priority is to stop the pruritus. I typically jump right in here with Apoquel. It is preferred because it starts to work within four hours, providing that fast relief that gains the owner's trust in your recommendations. You also have that flexibility in how long you can give it. The label says you can give Apoquil twice daily for up to 14 days and then administered once daily for maintenance therapy. The thing about Apoquil is it makes a lot of sense as many owners prefer the convenience of giving that medication at home. Absolutely. Sometimes the the oral route can be a little bit easier. What about Cytopoint? Can that be used in a first-time case? Yeah, good question. And of course, for certain patients, Cytopoint may be the preferred first step. I think Apoquil first, Cytopoint if. And my Cytopoint ifs are maybe the client can't come back in for timely recheck appointments, and that's going to be challenged to schedule. Certainly, if the dog is under 12 months of age, I'm going to reach for Cytopoint. Or one of the other biggest categories, which makes sense, is if giving the dog medications is difficult or if there's concern about owner compliance. Sure, that makes sense. The first step being provide fast relief. We don't want you know all our pets being itchy. So once we do that, what are our next two steps? Yeah, so you already have a one written in that first bubble on the left. Now just draw a short line between bubbles one and two and then write two in that second bubble from the left. This second step is rule out parasites. This is absolutely a critical step because fleas are a major flare factor for dogs with allergic and atopic dermatitis. Plus, you should be able to cure the dog if scabies is found or then manage them successfully with flea control, such as with the super new, super effective class of flea and tick products, the isoxazolines. Absolutely. Those were game changers when they they came out. I think I see where you're going with all of this. So what about step three? Okay. So draw a line from that second bubble to the third bubble. And of course, write number three in the third bubble. And that third step is address secondary skin infections. Bacterial and yeast infections can be treated topically and or systemically. And this therapy often brings dogs under their paritis threshold, and this makes them so much more comfortable. And of course, it's much easier to control allergic paritis when these flare factors are under control. Certainly, this is, I would love to take this moment just to implore listeners to not forget the importance of cytology. Skin cytology testing is quick. It's easy. You can train your technicians to do this for you. And at Zoetis, we have sponsored at NAVTA training modules for one hour of free CE for veterinarians and technicians at ce.navta.net. I love that. So if I'm understanding you correctly, you're saying the basic approach is 
control the paritis, rule out parasites, and treat any secondary infections without, of course, forgetting the importance of cytology in these cases. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah. And I think just, you know, again, for patients who are coming in just once or twice a year for dogs are just having those seasonal flares of allergic or atopic dermatitis, this is a really, really thoughtful and abbreviated approach. Absolutely. And it makes a lot of sense. I think that's a lot of what, you know, what many of us are doing. So to kind of put it into a systematic approach makes a lot of sense. So kind of moving away from these first time presentation type of dogs, what about the more chronic or non-seasonal allergic dermatitis cases? Yeah. If your patient is coming back three or more times a year, you need to strongly advocate for that full diagnostic workup, which includes the final two steps. So now's the time to draw a line from the third bubble to the fourth and officially add that number four. The fourth step is elimination diet trial for dogs with non-seasonal allergic paritis. Okay. And I feel like after, you know, being out in practice for several years, I'm getting more comfortable with these, but these can be kind of challenging. So what tips do you have for the food allergy workup? I'm glad that you're starting to feel more comfortable with them after being out in practice. (laughs) And you're right. They're not always easy. So the evidence-based medical literature suggests an eight-week food trial should help you diagnose 96% of the dogs who have a food allergy and 90% of the cats who again, have a true food allergy in that time frame. Apoquel, it certainly I would say is preferred during the food trials because of its short half-life. And I love it because of our ability to stop and start paritis control as needed to see how much the diet itself is actually helping. The allergy is not as prevalent. So I want to re- reiterate that this step is really only necessary for patients who have a non-seasonal allergic paritis or dermatitis. And the beauty of it is, is once you have that food allergy ruled out, or if the patients are only showing a seasonal pattern, then you can connect bubble four and five with a line and label that final fifth bubble as confirm atopic dermatitis, which of course we all know is a diagnosis of exclusion. And then you're in a a place where you can design a long-term maintenance program with Apoquel or possibly Cytopoint as that anchor therapy to provide a customized treatment depending on the owner and the pet preference and lifestyle. I really like this diagnostic approach. I feel like it's easy to follow. It makes sense. It kind of follows this logical line of thinking. So let's delve in a little bit deeper into targeted therapies for dogs with allergic paritis. First, talking about Apoquel, we know it works great at relieving allergic paritis in dogs, but what about its anti-inflammatory effects on the skin? Great question. So Apoquel was specifically designed to work on both allergic itch and inflammation due to allergic dermatitis. Consider that T helper type two lymphocytes drive the allergic response in the skin in dogs that is characterized by excessive production and activity of multiple pro-allergic and pro-inflammatory cytokines. These cytokines contribute to both itch and inflammation due to allergic dermatitis through the activation of the Janus kinase intracellular signaling pathway. Apoquel, of course, is a selective Janus kinase inhibitor, and when administered, it inhibits the activity of interleukin-31, which is the major itch-inducing cytokine, but Apoquel also inhibits the activity of other pro-inflammatory cytokines, such as interleukins 2, 4, 6, and 13, effectively inhibiting allergic inflammation due to allergic dermatitis. I love that you laid all that out because I know it's all, <laughs> it's all stuff that I know and have heard before, but it always helps to kind of reiterate it like that. And it makes a lot of sense. How does this theory hold up clinically? Yeah, you're right. That's all the heavy science, right? (laughs) The best test, but let's talk real world. Let's talk about what happens uh, to dogs who are living in the real world with allergic dermatitis. So there's a results from a randomized, blinded, controlled clinical study in dogs with allergic dermatitis. And in that study, dogs received either Apoquel or prednisolone for 28 days. 
And the investigators used what we call a dermatitis visual analog scale, which was measuring inflammation scores in the dog's skin. And the scale ranged from being a normal dog with no dermatitis to extremely severe dermatitis. Dogs receiving Apoquel and prednisolone had similar significant improvements in their dermatitis scores. And when looking at the first six days of treatment, there was no significant difference in the dermatitis scores between the two groups, nor was there a difference in the percent reduction in dermatitis scores from baseline. So basically the bottom line is this, the study showed that Apoquel reduced skin inflammation due to allergic dermatitis as well as steroids. And this is, this is very exciting to me. And I love sharing this study because some vets are not aware that Apoquel can absolutely help relieve both the itch and the skin inflammation due to allergic dermatitis in their patients. That is exciting. That's very exciting. Did it matter how severe the skin lesions were to start with? It did not. Dogs with moderately severe to even extremely severe dermatitis treated with Apoquel or prednisolone in this study had similar improvements in their veterinarian assessed dermatitis visual analog scale scores. And this just supports the original study conclusion that oclocitinib administered orally in the recommended dosing regimen reduces pruritus and clinical signs associated with allergic dermatitis to a level comparable to the efficacy of prednisolone administered at a dose of a half to one milligram per kilogram daily for six days. And that was even in dogs with more severe dermatitis. So Dr. Liska, you know, I love having you on the podcast and and very much respect your opinion. How does this hold up when we're talking to other dermatologists? What's kind of the general opinion about Apoquel's anti-inflammatory effects? That's really, that's really thoughtful. So kind of you to say, but you're right. <laughs> so, so it's, I love sharing this. So Zoetis uh, sponsored a roundtable discussion on Apoquel and inflammation. It would have been last November where we shared our published studies. And then we asked eight dermatologists and four general practitioners to share their thoughts on Apoquel's efficacy on not only the allergic pruritus, but also on inflammation due to allergic and atopic dermatitis. And after carefully reviewing the data, they agreed that Apoquel worked very well on skin inflammation due to allergic dermatitis and that this was comparable to steroids. The summary of the roundtable was just published in Clinician's Brief in June, and I would encourage your listeners to check it out. That sounds really interesting. I'll need to look into that. So one question that I, I have, I definitely have about Apoquel is, Can you talk a little bit about Apoquel's long-term safety? Since that's a common question we get asked about in practice by pet owners who, you know, they may have looked up information on Google or Facebook or other similar sites. Yes, it is a question that I get asked commonly also, and it is a big challenge. So what I am very happy to share is that Apoquel is an effective and safe treatment for dogs with allergic or atopic dermatitis. and can be used short-term or long-term. I think what will help is if I could share the results of Zoetis's comprehensive five-year pharmacovigilance review. When looking at the individual adverse events reported, the top five were vomiting, diarrhea, lethargy, anorexia, and blood work changes. For each of these, the incidence rate was considered very rare. And that means it was happening in less than one dog reacting per 10,000 dogs treated. That's amazing. And also in this pharmacovigilance review, papillomas and histiocytomas were the most commonly reported neoplasms occurring in dogs receiving Apoquel, but the incidence rate is considered very rare or less than one dog reacting per 10,000 dogs treated. So that's really helpful and really exciting. And I understand that there's a recently published study that looked at Apoquel versus a control group and the incidence of neoplasia, which I love that you kind of brought up at the end of your last statement there. Can you talk a little bit more about what they found in that study? Yes, absolutely. More information that I love to share. So there was a recent independent study 
that compared the rate of neoplasia in a group of over 300 allergic dogs treated with Apoquel for at least six months. And that group was compared with an age and breed matched control group of also over 300 allergic dogs that had never been treated with Apoquel. That study found that there was no significant difference in the cumulative incidence rate of malignancies or overall skin masses between the two groups. The authors of that publication stated, long-term treatment with oclacitinib did not pose additional risks for malignancies in dogs. So just to pull it all together, there's no evidence that dogs treated with Apoquel have a higher risk for the development of new neoplasms. And of course, as clinicians out there, you should consider the risks and benefits of any treatment prior to starting it, Apoquel included. Sure, sure. Always make that good individual assessment. Let's talk a little bit more about Cytopoint now. It works so well in most dogs, but what about the dog who responds but maybe less than optimally after the first injection? I've heard that it might be worth giving another injection to that dog. Yeah, sure. That's a fair question. So Cytopoint is highly effective for atopic and allergic dermatitis. And in fact, we know that over 80% of dogs will respond within 72 hours of their injection. And that response is maintained in 69% of dogs all the way up to day 28 at the end of the month. Of course, in real life use, a minority of dogs do not completely respond to their first Cytopoint injection. And interestingly, we heard from GPs and dermatologists that even better results were seen after second and even after third injections in many of these dogs. And we wanted to see if this phenomenon was real. Could we get higher efficacy rates in these partial responders if we persevered with Cytopoint? So a new study was done. Perfect. Perfect. Tell me a little bit more about that study. What were the results and how does that change the way we should treat dogs with Cytopoint? In this study, 110 dogs with atopic dermatitis were given one to three Cytopoint injections, depending on their response. Owners performed weekly itch scores and dogs were examined by their veterinarian once on days 30, 60, and 90 to evaluate response to therapy at the end of the month. At the end of the first month, 65% of dogs were doing great and were a treatment success. So that number is very close to our original efficacy of 69% at the end of the month, which we think is great news to see that it's performing as expected in the field. But the question is, what about that remaining 35%? Could we get those dogs to respond? So we went ahead and gave those dogs a second injection and saw them back at day 60. And of course, guess what? Many did now respond. In fact, from a cumulative perspective, Overall, 85% of these dogs are responding to Cytopoint. But what about that remaining 15%? The question is, can they do any better? And the good news is, is that they can. After a third injection, and now looking at our day 90 results, overall, 93% of dogs are responding to Cytopoint and considered treatment successes. Wow, that's awesome. So basically, we don't want to give up on Cytopoint too soon. Absolutely. I think that's a fair and true statement, but I definitely want to be very clear. The takeaway message is not that every single dog will need three monthly injections of Cytopoint, but what is clear from the study is that for dogs that are what we'll call, let's, let's just call them less than optimal responders. It is worth giving them a second and sometimes even a third monthly injection of Cytopoint before you decide on the efficacy of the therapy. You know, if we look at the statistics, if we had given up after the first dose in these dogs, we would have missed 28% of the dogs that would have gone on to become a treatment success. So that's great to hear. I feel like it really opens up the door for more treatment options. And Dr. Liska, you've given us so much helpful information today, but I know there's more. I understand there's a special month devoted to itchy dogs coming up soon. So how can practices get ready for Itchy Pet Awareness Month in August? It's such a good question. It's crazy how fast this year is flying by. And so exciting that the month to share that the month of August 
is going to be the third year of Itchy Pet Awareness Month sponsored by Zoetis. One of the things that's been so cool for me is each August, since we initiated Itchy Pet Awareness Month, we have broken prior record numbers of how many itchy dogs are coming into the clinic in the month of August. So this is great news for our itchy dogs. They're getting the help that they need by raising awareness of allergic itch and certainly as a medical condition that needs to be seen by a veterinarian and needs veterinary treatment. You know, and it's a fun way to get pet owners and the entire staff excited and involved. There's a website you can go to. It's itchypetawarenessmonth.com. And it has all sorts of good stuff. A how-to guide, a toolkit to get your practice ready for Itchy Pet Awareness Month. There is customizable Facebook and Instagram story posts. There's even a TikTok toolkit, animated GIFs waiting room posters, exam room posters, and certainly some other ideas to help generate excitement. Some of the fun things that I noticed were giveaway contests and who doesn't love to post pet photos. And so there's ideas to help with that and all of that under the hashtag itchy pet awareness month. Certainly we know there'll be updated resource and I, I understand that they'll be ready in July. So again, check out itchypetawarenessmonth.com. All those resources should be available in July. Well, Dr. Liska, this has been great. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing all of this super helpful information that I think will give us a lot more, you know, just tools in our toolkit for treating these allergic dogs. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to share with us? Oh, certainly. I think that we've shared a, a lot of good stuff here today, and it's always great to spend time with you. And I hope your your listeners were able to take good notes that they'll be able to use in practice, be able to share with their colleagues information that they'll be able to share with clients. Wonderful. Well, thank you again so much for coming on. Thank you, Dr. Cassie. All right, everybody, I hope you are all feeling a sense of relief knowing that there is a little bit more of an abbreviated version of the dermatology workup out there and that you have a little bit more information about the use of Apoquel and Cytopoint in these patients. Thank you to Dr. Liska. It's always a pleasure to have you on the podcast. And a big thank you to Zoetis for making this episode possible. For more episodes like this, click on the education tab on the Vetfolio website. As always, we'd love to hear your input on this episode, as well as ideas for topics you'd like to hear from us in the future. Feel free to reach out to me at dvm at vetfolio.com. You can also visit my Facebook page at Dr. Cassie DVM, and you can find me on LinkedIn. And remember, if one animal is better off because of you today, it's a great day. Important safety information. Do not use Apoquel in dogs less than 12 months of age or those with serious infections. Apoquel may increase the chances of developing serious infections and may cause existing parasitic skin infestations or pre-existing cancers to get worse. Consider the risks and benefits of treatment in dogs with a history of recurrence of these conditions. New neoplastic conditions, benign and malignant, were observed in clinical studies and post-approval. Apoquel has not been tested in dogs receiving some medications, including some commonly used to treat skin conditions, such as corticosteroids and cyclosporins. Do not use in breeding, pregnant, or lactating dogs. Most common side effects are vomiting and diarrhea. Apoquel has been used safely with many common medications, including parasiticides, antibiotics, and vaccines. For more information, please see the full prescribing information at apoquel.com pi. Apoquel Indications Control of pruritus or itching associated with allergic dermatitis and control of atopic dermatitis in dogs at least 12 months of age. Cytopoint indications. Cytopoint has been shown to be effective for the treatment of dogs against allergic dermatitis and atopic dermatitis. Zoetis is dedicated to changing the way we approach canine pruritus to protect the bond between the pet, the owner, and the veterinary team.